this is Doug Stanhope, and you are listening to Revolution of the Board Podcast. Another one. Revolution of the Board. Episode up right now, fuck faces. Yeah, we're episode whatever of Revolution of the Board. This semi annual rant that we, hour long rant that we do, that we try to call a podcast. It's Sunday, we're both tired as shit. Yeah, it's one of those Sundays. Ah, dude, I'm just. It's like, it's one of those Sundays where there's not that much shit going on. It's just, um, Everything that's in the news, like we were actually, to be completely honest with you guys, we were just talking right now about, uh, you know, what the fuck could we talk about? What could we go over? And all the shit that's in the news right now is just so fucking overplayed and it's uh, it's painful to actually go over, you know, the fucking Robin Williams thing, you know, the, yeah, the, the shit in Israel, the Mike, Mike Brown. Brown killing. It's fucking, I'm so sick of hearing that shit. I'm so <laughs> sick of, of having to constantly be bombarded by images and sound bites and you know all of a sudden we because one star killed himself it's all of a sudden suicide prevention week shit you know i mean i've been suicidal at one point i know fucking josh has too yeah. i'm pretty sure most of you have at one point or <laughs> yeah, another if you're actually if, listening to us if not at this me. very moment from listening to my annoying ass voice <laughs> that's enough to make anybody want to kill themselves but no, I mean, it does, it, it, people try to take an event and turn it into something that, that has, uh, what is it, that has weight on their own lives. They try to make it about them, and that's what this whole fucking thing yeah, is. Yeah, they definitely personalize it. But like, I guess that's the only way they can deal with it. Yeah. Because there's some people that I know that really can't deal with death. Um, I know someone that posted up, I think kind of mocking the whole situation but he's a guy that also couldn't go to one of our friends funerals because he just can't deal with it yeah i mean there is there are people that that you know have a hard time you know rationalizing the whole concept of you know somebody was in your life even if it was somebody you didn't know you know like one per one moment that person's there one moment they're gone you know and it's yeah. it's hard to fucking deal with but you yeah there was a guy that i didn't like too much in high school but i still went to his uh, i think we kind of made up over the years Sexually? Something like that. No. <laughs> Faggot. Um, I forget the whole situation. I just know I didn't like him. Uh, then... You guys had a falling many, out, basically. I forgot how many years ago, but he died of meningitis. I thought you said manginas. No, meningitis. <laughs> and, uh, and I still went to... It wasn't the funeral, it was, I guess, the mass. The, like the memorial that they had? Yeah, I was at a church. Mm. And uh, I went to that, and I think I had to go to work right afterwards. Yeah, that was a very uneventful story. <laughs> <laughs> but the key is, I still went to show my respect. Yeah. Well, we all, I, yeah, I didn't know the guy that well. I mean, the, the point is, we all deal with it in different ways. I, I recently went to not really a funeral, but, uh, I didn't go to the funeral, but I went to the memorial for, uh, a young girl that I didn't know personally, I had met her, um, but she was a friend of a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I went with that friend to the memorial, you know, for moral support and everything, and, like, the friend that I went with, we have kind of a similar sense of humor, and it was interesting to see how we both deal with this situation. I wasn't really emotionally invested in it because I didn't know the person, yeah. but the girl I went with was. And since we both have that same type of sense of humor, we tended to, you know, deal with it by cracking jokes, saying fucked up things. Not necessarily about the girl in general, but just, just you know, whatever came to mind. And, yeah. and the person I went with felt 
started feeling kind of, uh, you know, kind of guilty for laughing at this this event that was supposed to be serious. And like, and I told her, I'm like, you know what? No, this is everybody deals with this is differently. There's no right way, or there's no way that you're supposed to act at a funeral. I mean, yeah, it's it's not a happy event to be at, but. You know, you have to do whatever is healthy for you. Yeah, and so long as it's not like you show up and take your pants off and jerk off on the deceased. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a healthy way to respond to that kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, like, I I think uh, what causes a lot of, of uh, hell, even <clears throat> what causes a lot of depression is the fact that, you know, you're told that you're supposed to react to certain things a certain way, but if that doesn't fit into your own... Uh, psychological makeup, your own personality, you know, that can cause that conflict, and you're like, oh, well, I'm just a fucked up person. You start believing this this uh, concept that you have of yourself, like, oh, I'm just fucked up, I'm just uh, a horrible person, because I don't, I don't deal with this the way everybody else does, and that's mm -hmm. bullshit. You know, I think, I think we'd be a lot uh, better off if we were allowed to deal with things in our own way. And I think that's one of the things that was contributing, I'm not saying that's the, the end-all, be-all cause of what happened with Robin Williams, but I think that was probably part of it because, you know, he's under so much scrutiny uh, from the media, you know, people love him, people are know what he's doing at every step of the way, so he can't really just be himself, he can't, he could just be depressed. If he was depressed, it had to be in the eyes of everybody yeah. that was watching. And plus he was battling d addictions. What I've heard, I heard, I think, earlier this year, he tried to uh, get himself into a rehab. Mm -hmm. Although, who knows how many times, I mean, I haven't read enough about his life. I just know that he was struggling with addictions. Yeah. But the point I want to make is, like, I don't, I don't want to, for this to become a discussion about depression just because Robin Williams killed himself. I think that's wrong to do, because... Uh, what I see a lot of people doing is they take the event, they turn it into a discussion about depression, and then it invariably becomes a discussion about how depression has occurred in their own lives. And so by doing that, they make it a discussion about them and not about this person who went through this bullshit. No. And I, I hate to see that. I hate to see people making things about themselves and masquerading that as false mourning or false uh, sympathy toward a yeah. cause or toward a person. I think it's just because they don't know how to do anything else but internalize it and share it in that way. They just, a lot of people are just, oh Christ, just narcissistic cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you can put it. I mean, there, look at the, look at the, the uproar that's, that's, uh, resulted in this whole uh, Facebook fucking um, that new app that they're making everybody download just to check, yeah. check their messages. People are are saying like, no, it's going to invade my privacy because it does this. Well, then don't fucking download the app. And plus, you don't need to be posting up your goddamn information. I see people that post up their day-to-day -day basis and they're like, good night, Facebook, <laughs> at the end of the night. I know. I mean, you can't you can't claim to be concerned about privacy when every fucking every other picture is a selfie or a picture yes. of what you had for dinner that you day. You got a hashtag food porn. Fuck you. Food porn actually has like <laughs> things going into you, not just orally. Like you're worried about people invading your privacy. You're not that fucking interesting. You're exactly. Not. Because they're the same people that have to post about. 20 pictures a week of their boyfriend and girlfriend and it's like hashtag love you or yeah. just Sunday fun day <laughs> God it makes me want to kill myself I hate the, I, uh, <laughs> we were talking about this uh, before we started recording but yeah I do I hate that whole like themed day thing it, it, the, that whole like throwback Thursday woman crush Wednesday you know and then just calling something like, like you said, Sunday Funday, it just, it annoys me. It grates at my nerves. Yes, all their hashtags. It makes me, like, think of a, it, it makes me think of those annoying fucking, like, TGI Friday style restaurants back in the 90s where they had, you know, fucking, was it Ruby Tuesday or some shit, you know? 
I don't know. It's... Or any of those things. I've seen an advertisement for a bar. It says Thirsty Thursdays. And I just wanted... I hoped that someone like Billy Joel would just crash into it. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking drive a... Just drive a fucking... Vehicle. Car right into the goddamn place. <laughs> and randomly it beat Joel, Billy Joel? Yes. <laughs> He's singing Piano Man drunk on vodka. <laughs> Drunk on cheap plastic jug vodka. Uh, he's just ranting about the Jew, something like that. Who knows what? Spewing for the anti-Semitic shit. He's like, sing us a song. You're the piano man. You fucking kike. <laughs> People were just looking at him like, did Billy Joel just crash into the bar? Like, holy shit! I gotta take a picture of this and post it on Facebook. <laughs> Selfie. And then he just comes out and beats you over the head with a brick. <laughs> Uh, now that's a Sunday I want to see. <laughs> and then his publicist walks in and is like, yeah, he does that. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's it's a way of just trying to be, I guess, cheeky. It's just everyone needs some kind of catchphrase or stupid bullshit like that. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Well, I think or, that's another thing about Facebook and social media in general. It turns you into an advertiser for yourself. Yeah, you know, and I, mean, I clearly use Facebook to promote shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're both totally talking out of our asses because we, we are shameless but self-promoters. If anything, we actually have something to promote. Yeah, we're pro- <laughs> we are promoters. We, we are, are self-promoters, but we're promoting a product. I promote my comedy and uh, this podcast. Josh yeah, promotes the parts, multitude of shit that he does. Uh, yeah, whatever project I'm working on. Cue the name be... dropping. <laughs> or not the name dropping, but the shameless plug. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll do it for you, man, so it's not so douchey. He fucking promotes his damage trade uh, zine. He f- promotes this podcast, his art. Yeah, all the, the flea markets, the, the art shows they've been having just about two a month so far. Mm-hmm. And they might, there might be another one. Uh, the guy, One of the guys that opened up the, the percolator is going to open up the percolator in a new spot. To do an art show? Oh, like a second percolator? Yeah, or? and it's going to be, I don't know exactly where... But it's close to where Chico's Tacos used to be on uh, McCray. Oh, McCray? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, he, it was he had actually hit me up about it. Huh. And I haven't seen the new location, so I don't know how many people are going to be able to fit, what bands would be able to get going. <clears throat> if, um, if we did do this, it would probably be sometime in September, I'm thinking like so it'll 12th be... or the 13th. It'll be on a Saturday. That's cool. Is it going to be like a bigger venue, bigger building, or...? I really have no idea. That's why I tried to drive by the area to see where it would be, but um, yeah, I had no clue. Cool, cool. So I need to actually check out the spot so I could get a better <coughs> idea on how many people can uh, attend. Definitely need to know what bands are going to play. This place called Monarch, it's downtown. It's where Dito used to be, and I'm kind of glad Dito was closed because there are some fucking douchebags there. But then again, there's douchebags everywhere in this fucking city, no matter where you are. It became very scene-oriented, like Dito's. I mean, I I loved that place back in the day. I would always go (laughs) hang out with uh, fucking my my boy, the DJ there, Josh. Yeah, Uh, um, one of my exes was friends with him. And, uh, yeah, we'd go and hang out there. There were a few times that we'd actually go there. Funny thing about him, man, I I met him, um, not at Dito's, but... When I was like, shit, maybe 15, 16. No, it was it was after that. It was after that. It was probably like, I was probably about 19 or 20. Uh, but I would go, we were still, me and my friend Mike at the time, my best friend at the time, uh, we would be driving around fucking looking for shit to do. We were both still underage. Yeah. Uh, and one of the places we could always get into was this place, uh, Platinum's, way on the far east side, uh, over by the annex, actually. And okay. it, it was a it was a fucking strip club, and we would go there, hang out. We would uh, we made friends with. That's where I met uh, Josh, the the DJ. Yeah. And we would always just fucking hang out there, shoot pool, fucking look at naked chicks dancing. Yeah, it was good chicks with time. daddy's issues. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was one of the places I could always go to get a, a nice underage beer. Nice. Those are always fun. The same thing I kind of did that with Dito. I had more fun drinking in the parking lot than I ever had in there. <laughs> also, <laughs> I don't dance. <laughs> True. Well, yeah, I mean, well, they had such a small dance area. Most of it was bar, you know? But it was just like a little living room type thing for the dance area. Yeah, it's kind of, it's still the same thing there. 
the... But now it's hipsters, so it's pretty packed. It's oh. the most packed I've ever seen Dio. Aside well, it's from Monarch Halloween. Now, right? Yeah, the Monarch. So it's the Punk Rock Flea Market's going to be in the same building? Or on in the outside it's of the parking lot? It's going to be in the parking lot, and maybe some tables inside. Okay. So for those of you uh, trying to get an idea, maybe don't know El Paso that well, it's up on Mesa. Right? It's Mesa and Rio Grande, I think. Mesa and Rio Grande, uh, downtown El Paso. Uh, next to the That's... Sumatra. Uh, but so far I've actually been working on uh, just art prints of different horror movies. Uh, American Psycho, there's Jason, there's The Blob, uh, Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, I'm currently working on some lettering for possibly the limited prints of Bile's CD, Built to Fuck, Born to Kill. Nice. Yeah. I just started working on kind of a logo, based off their original logo, but kind of my own style in a way. And I contacted the bassist, or he's a guitarist. He's definitely one of the members, but he's not the founding, or one of the founding members. I don't know. I know Christoph is the main guy, he's the Trent Reznor of Lyle pretty much, and um, R.H. Bear, he kind of uh, tours with them, he's done the t-shirt designs and prints I think, I don't know if he writes his songs, probably, it's because I haven't checked the little booklets, usually Christoph I think writes most of it, but uh, yeah they're going to do limited prints, probably about a hundred copies, but their CD that came out, I think, beginning of last year. Yeah, so that's really cool. I've just been working on it. That's actually what I was doing. I was working on it over at the uh, Eskimo Hut. Wow. But when, uh, when you were, when you were calling me. <laughs> yeah, my mind was just going to shit right now. Oh man, it's one of those fucking lazy ass Sundays. See, that's that's the problem we do we do these podcasts mainly on Sundays and I think that's pretty much both of our day to relax so we're usually in a, in a kind of mood to just fucking sit back and not do shit yeah all Sundays to me are usually just really lazy well, it's the Lord's Day Josh fuck the Lord <laughs> um what else yeah today's episode is brought to you by anger and vitriol mm. Uh, no, we can see about that guy with the, the percolator if he'll do comedy nights. That'd be cool, man. Because I've, I've been, like, I, I, I like uh, doing comedy with the guys that are currently, I guess, in the comedy scene here in El Paso. But I've, I've kind of uh, toyed around with the idea of starting my own, like, troupe, I guess. But, and by troupe, I just really mean basically a group of comedians that would do shows together. But... Specifically for, um, for the the edgier like more offensive comedy. I guess you could say the blue working blue. Yeah, mostly uh, mostly blue comics. You know, people like myself. I got uh, I really enjoy if I can ever get her to get back on fucking stage. Uh, my friend Joanna Mumbles. You know Mumbles, do you? I've met her a few times. You ever seen her do comedy? No, I've actually. She's actually wanted. She, she's kind of. She's cool. She's kind of ditzy in person, but uh, actually on stage, uh, I remember one time in in specific where like she was just uh, just pretty much let loose uh, with shit that she had actually written, and it was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. She was talking about aborting her kids and fucking uh, <laughs> being a neglectful mom and. I don't know. It was, it was funny. That's hilarious. I don't want to. I don't want to give away her set because I wouldn't do it justice. No, I'd be done. Actually, hear it. Yeah. I think I've seen pictures of her on stage, but yeah, it's been very few times. I don't think I've actually hung out with her. Pretty cool. She's a pretty cool. Cool girl. Yeah, I ran into her at a Walmart once. But yeah, I gotta. I gotta convince that broad to get back on stage, man, because she's she's fucking hilarious and she should be doing comedy. That's a problem I, why I've never done comedy. I can't think of what would make a set list. I'd probably just go up on stage and eat a dick because it just... I can't... Call it the aristocrats. Yeah, I can't think of a goddamn thing to go up on stage and yell about. Because I think that's what I would name, mainly do is just rant 
and scream because there's too <laughs> there's too much anger in me. I think there's a market like, for that. Hey, look at look at Hitler, man. He got a pretty decent following by just ranting and screaming. Just make it somewhat funny, and you'd have your own edge to it. Yeah, I would just need to actually try to figure out a way to write it. I just haven't sat down to try and get an idea of anything. Yeah. I've just been busy with other stuff. Hell, it's even tough to try to get back into writing music, which I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to make some more songs again, mm -hmm. but I just haven't done anything. I've just been working on different things, I guess. That's why. Well, my problem is just that uh, I've been procrastinating as far as getting back to doing stand-up comedy. I haven't done shows in forever. Um, I've got half a set written, but I don't know. I've just been kind of putting it off because, I, I don't know, I haven't uh, really dedicated the amount of energy to it that I should be. <clears throat> See, that's why if they do have the, uh, the new percolator, you could do something like Thunder Pussy, which we were talking about. This is something from Be Death Squad, and... They go up on stage and it's kind of like improv. One comedian will stand up there, the audience will yell at different things, and they'll try to take their own ideas into it, make bits out of the jokes, or just say stupid shit. But for the most part, the crowd's pretty dumb. <laughs> How so? All they'll say is like, pussy, smelly pussy. And Joe Rogan went off on that guy. He's like, is that, what you th is that what's on your mind? It's like, really? And he goes up on stage doing the thunder pussy for good hour the one that I listen to yeah, and usually, they, they do it they release it in podcasts mm -hmm. cool. and some of them have videos I've never seen the videos I just listen to them at work um, yeah usually people will do about 5 to 20 minutes that's the first time Rogan almost did pretty much a full set sure. but it's just a nice a good idea to actually do something like that because it would probably strengthen uh just being on stage, or help craft some ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it sounds like an idea. <clears throat> like a good idea. I don't know. I, I am shitty with improv. So I don't know how well I do in that situation, but no. Well, you never know. So I'd give it a shot. But. Who the fuck knows? Because <laughs> I did try to go up on stage and did something, it was called a smut slam they have here every now and then. Mm -hmm. What exactly is involved in a smut slam? Like, you basically go up and tell <clears throat> sex stories, right? Yes, that's pretty much what they've done. That's the gist of it? Yeah, I went up and told this story about how I lost my virginity, but I kind of rushed through the story. I was up on stage maybe for a few minutes, but it feels like I really talked this super fast. Well, see, that's the beginnings of of comedy, of doing, of constructing a comedy set. Not necessarily that this, the story was humorous, but like it was a little bit. They kind of laughed when I, or cheered when I told them how that I lost my virginity. I got all three holes. <laughs> and then the fact that she's doing porn now. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. This is the brand launch you fucking porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of her videos. And it's. Damn. It's a lot of spitting. It's that kind of porn that, at the end of it, she's just wet, covered in semen and sweat. Makeup's all fucked up like she's been crying on prom night. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I'm not into. I'm not into that kind of porn. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave likes the rough stuff. But, um... Yeah, I was thinking, just be careful with that knife. You're just putting it really close to your eyes right now. Oh. Yeah, like, if for those at home, I'm not, I'm just, like, kind of fiddling around with a knife. But, uh, um, no, it's not that fucking sharp. Yeah, at the corner of your eye. Well, it's still pointy. <laughs> I just saw the corner of my eye. He started lifting it towards his face. I was wondering if he was, <laughs> Dave just kind of forgot. I had this sharp thing in my hand, and, oh, oh there goes my vision. I stabbed myself in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Christ. Um, so, have, have you, uh, like, have, have there been any new projects that you've considered, like, uh, aside from the comic books or the CD, the music or anything like that? 
I don't care about music at the mo moment. But I'm trying to get into new stuff. I want to kind of open my mind and try to get some new ideas. But this is a lot of music these days I can't stand. Um, I've been trying to see other industrial bands, but some of them kind of all sound the same. Mm -hmm. Or we have nothing against Skitty Puppy, but it's, I think, a little bit too mellow for my taste. Yeah, I've, I've become way too picky when it comes to music, and I think that's part of the reason why I don't, I don't listen to old music very often now. Uh, I find myself listening to podcasts because it's podcasts. There's a new, it's yeah, a freshness. New. Yeah, there's something new each time. I mean, it might be the same podcast, the same format, the same people, same guests. Yeah, but... you have different guests, and even if it's a repeat guest, they're usually talking about something different. You know, with music, you get used to it so quickly. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff is all music that I've listened to all my life for the past, like, it feels like it's getting closer to 20 years. I can't remember when I actually started listening to music a lot. I know I was in grade school, and then sometimes I would listen to my mom's old cassette tapes, and then a little bit later, that's probably about About 12 or 13 when I was in 7th grade. Well, the summer before the 7th grade. Uh, yeah, between 6th and 7th, that's when I got into Manson. Yeah. I just, I noticed like with uh, podcasting especially, it's, it's this new format that's kind of replaced talk radio. <clears throat> but it essentially is talk radio. I remember uh, when I was a kid, my grandpa would always, especially in the mornings, he'd be listening to the, the AM stations. Mm -hmm. And it would always be like some some talk radio kind of thing. Yeah, I think that happened sometimes with the, one of my uncles. There's a few times when we were driving around. He either have it on the queue or there was a talk radio, but it'd always be kind of political. Yeah, that's the one. That I, don't, I can't stand. That's the kind that my grandpa would listen to, but I mean that's that's basically what we're doing now. It's just a new format. It's but it's the same shit. Yeah. It's just long form. I mean, I'm pretty sure the the whatever talk radio shows were on at that time, they wouldn't last like fucking three hours, you know. Oh yeah, and that that's the length of sometimes the or like Rogan's podcasts, like th close to three hours. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure they'd have a DJ on for for several hours, but it wouldn't be the same thing for that three hours. He wouldn't have a guest on for three hours. Yeah. Like, it is with Rogan. But there is there is something to be said for that long-form podcast, because like Rogan says, you actually do get to know the person. It's not just a series of sound bites. You have a conversation with Well, you listen yeah, to a conversation. It goes somewhere. And it's been cool how I've seen it grow. Yeah. Well, it's also uh, the whole medium of, of podcasting is... There's so much flexibility with what you can do with it. With radio, you were pretty much kind of set in one format, you know? Yeah, plus you couldn't be too out there. Yeah, exactly. You, you have all this uh, advertising control and, and, you know, you have, to please, you have to appease the advertisers and everything. Podcasting doesn't have that. Anybody can do it. Uh, you can set up wherever. You can do it just audio. You can do audio and video. Uh, you could have an interaction through a you know, fucking the internet. Tweets. You, you can have uh, a form of, like, call-ins. Uh, yeah, Corolla has that all the time. Mm -hmm. He'll tweet out, hey, give us a call, we're going to be talking about this. Or if you have any questions, and he'll just answer them on air. And, um... Yeah, he's also Hope has this fucking burner phone that he's using for... And uh, Corolla's still going to fight the troll, the patent troll. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is the status of that? If you guys, uh, for the listeners there at home, the the patent troll is basically uh, some asshole is trying to uh, claim that he... He owns a that he patent. Invented. No, he just owns a patent or, on uh, pretty much... What is it? A list for podcasts, like, let's say... Podcast comes out on Tuesday, and then there's one day shows. So there's a, a playlist, and somehow he has some uh, patent on something like he's, that. He's trying to claim ownership to the 
Well, I mean, he does. He actually does own that patent. Yeah, yeah, but he probably bought it off some guy. That, yeah, he's yeah. he's basically trying to uh, take control of a certain aspect of podcasting. Yeah. That's that's central to its production. Yeah. So basically, if he's successful, we're not gonna that that takes away the ability for people like us to put out a podcast. Yeah, like without that. having to pay extra. And they try to go to Adam Carolla because he was the number one podcast. He actually has that Guinness World Record, uh, most downloaded podcast in the world. And he was telling Carolla, hey, give me money and I'll go away. Carolla said, fuck you, we're going to fight this. I, even, I gave 50 bucks uh, towards it earlier this year. I, I don't know if they still have the mil- uh, 1.3 million that they needed. But they're pretty close, and a lot of it was actually trying to get it out of for a new place, uh, a venue, because the, the patent trolls like to uh, claim that they have a business in some small town in Texas yeah. that that town's making money off uh, people trying to fight these patents, and this was one of the most expensive litigation. You can uh, around, I guess. So that's why it's just been going on. I think September is a court date. I don't know uh, all the details. So go over it every now and then. Like the guys from Audio One or whatever the fuck the patent uh, troll's name is. They're fake company, most likely. He's publicly said, hey, we try to drop the litigation, but Corolla just keeps going. No, if they really did try to stop it, they would have said, okay, we're dropping this, yeah. uh, we're dropping it. We're dropping the lawsuit. But no, they haven't. But they're scared because it's being outsourced with all the fans and the podcasts. He's gone on different podcasts. Uh, I'm pretty sure Rogan and Death Squad's probably given some money for the litigation. You know, they're going to fight this because if they lose, then Audio One or Pure Audio, whatever the fuck it's called, is going to be going after, let's say, Marin or uh, Death Squad, Bill Burr, or anyone else that has a number one podcast. Yeah, anybody that has a substantial amount of listeners and has some pull with advertisers and, and, you know, anything where they can squeeze money out of. Yeah, but hopefully they're not going to let it happen. So they've been still fighting it. Yeah, yeah, it's that time. <laughs> it's that time. <laughs> We're just kind of like, yeah. Yeah, this episode's running yeah. at about 43, 43 minutes, it looks like, so far. Yeah. Uh, is there any shout-outs you want to give? Any, uh... Look, I don't know, because I, aside from the, the markets, uh, there really isn't much going on. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't really do too much, aside from... Hanging out on weekends every now and then, or doing the shows. For the most part of my days, I wake up, go to work, work a bit on art, sometimes go to the gym, and that's it. I've been wanting to get back into recording, but I just haven't done anything. I might have a show uh, playing as Morphine on um, the sixth birthday show. Well, as for me, I mean, uh... Uh, I, I've been saying this for a long time, and it's really just time for me to get off my ass and do it. I am going to be going back into comedy. Uh, I'm going to put myself on the spot here and and uh, put it out there that I will be doing a show before the next episode of this podcast airs. So Even if it's at the bus station. Yeah, just keep it. even if I'm just in my fucking <laughs> underwear ranting at, at children and their families at a, at a bus station somewhere, I'll fucking do it. So keep your eyes open for that. I'll be posting dates. I'll let you know what venues I'll be doing at. And by venues, it's probably going to be a bar. But, um, yeah, just, just uh, if you're interested in seeing me perform uh, comedy, keep your eyes open. I'll let you. I'll find a way to let you guys know. If you want to catch Josh, hit up the, the Punk Rock Flea Market. He's, he'll let you know about the different shows that he's got coming yeah, up. Yeah, so. I think we need to get back to doing shit on the page again. I don't think we've done that in a while. Yeah, we do need to co- keep up the Revolution of the Board page also. But also, uh, you guys, I mean, we uh, 
right now we're going to, after we stop recording, we're going to discuss uh, future guests that we're going to have on. I know we've had a couple instances where we were uh, said we were going to have different guests, but that didn't pan yeah. out. And um, hopefully maybe one day we can have sort of a flea market podcast. Yeah. Just to go over some of the local artists around there. Uh, talk to Leah, the one that's putting it together. Uh, she's been a major help in getting this whole thing started. Yeah. And you guys, if you have, uh, if if you know anybody that's got an interesting story to tell, something fucked up and crazy, you know, kind of shit we like, uh, let us know. Uh, we'll see if we can get them on the podcast. Or if you yourself have a have a story to tell, uh, or you know somebody in an interesting kind of profession, you know, something out of the ordinary, something interesting, something that you'd like to hear uh, discussed on this podcast. Let us know. We'll, fucking, we'll set it up so we can put them on, on air. Alright. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah, that so. being said, this has been a fucking podcast. It's a uh, revolution of the board. We'll catch you fuckers next time. Yeah, eat shit. Hey guys, Dave here. We still got more podcasts for you, so don't worry, sit tight. Just wanted to take a quick second to let you know about some of the stuff we got going on here. Uh, first of all, visit Revolution of the Board on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash revolution of the board, all one word. Uh, also, you can find us on iTunes. Please, uh, if you do visit that, go ahead and rate us. It really does help out the show. Let's us get a little bit more visibility. Let's us spread the word and get more listeners and everything, all that good stuff. Uh, also, Josh himself can be found on several different MySpace pages. He does have his um, facebook.com backslash morphine the band. Also, check out his art uh, as far as his paintings and stuff on facebook.com backslash morphine art. Uh, for those two, morphine is spelled M O R F I E N D. Also, you can check out the zine which he puts out semi monthly. Uh, that is Damage Trade, which can be found on facebook.com backslash the damage trade. As for myself, uh, you can find my fan page on facebook.com slash David Gomez Music. That's D-A-V-I-D-G-O-M-E-Z-M-U-S-I-C, all one word. And also find me on Twitter. Uh, I post a lot of basically comedy-related stuff for the most part. Uh, that's on that's at Twitter. That's at WhoIsTheDave. Also, we'd just like to take a quick second to uh, give a shout-out to the El Paso Punk Rock Flea Market. That's where you can catch Morphine. Uh, either playing music or selling his uh, his different art. Uh, that would be found at facebook.com backslash El Paso Punk Rock Free Market. All one word. Also, the uh, art show that we, uh, Morphine has coming up is going to be at Billy Merck's Coffee House. Um, that is 9627 Sims, Sweet J. That's going to be a $2 cover. $5 for Bring Your Own Booze. That's going to be taking place on September the 13th, so go ahead and check it out. So without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue the podcast. Now this was recorded, uh, like I said, I left the, I left uh, my phone recording without Josh knowing. We had already had a few to drink afterwards, and we, this is basically just us, uh, you know, chatting back and forth. At one point we actually even pick up the guitars and start playing horribly. So go ahead and check it out. I've been trying to see what's up on this thing. It's one of Eli Roth's uh, apps. It's called The Crypt. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to have horror movie stuff. Like one of them was a, kind of like a little creepy vine. Those I've been looking at a lot. Shit, you know what? I gotta start downloading. I was because I ran out of all shit. To, I've pretty much watched everything that I wanted to download. Uh, I watched both seasons <laughs> of Marin, this oh, TV show. How was that? It's good, dude. I think you'd like it. You should check it out. Because sometimes Cause, his podcasts, I kind of don't like them. Yeah, they're a little too cunty sometimes, like, as far as his rants. Yeah, he'll ramble on for the first 20 minutes about his life and getting his shit together. Mm-hmm. And then the interview will be okay. Bill well, Burr's been pretty good. When when he gets into, sh- when Marin gets into shit about himself, it comes off a little bit too whiny sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's what I don't like about it. And that kind of translates a little bit into the show, but I think uh, it's still he still manages to make it pretty funny. And I actually I took a liking to it. It's not too bad. Burr, I haven't listened to in a while. I need to get back on track with that shit. Hey, he's going to be releasing a new special. He's just been editing it, I think, over yeah. the past few months. Well, Rogan's about to film his. And then Stanhope, I don't know what he's doing. Well, he already... Stanhope has how many albums? What even I forget. Uh, no, I have, like... I have at least six. That's because we also have bootlegs. That's why, so... Um, 
So there's yeah. no ref no refunds. Uh, burning the bridge to nowhere. Uh, and I'm not going in chronological order at all. Yeah, uh, there's a great white, Butch, great white Stanhope, uh, uh, die laughing, yeah, the, sicko, sicko, uh, deadbeat hero. So that's seven. Before already. turning the gun on himself. Yeah. Eight. I don't know. I've seen this like shift in the whole uh, work ethic of comics lately, as to where they didn't used to do that before. They're actually releasing shit on a yearly basis now. No, well, because CK up the game. Yeah, and that's great because I, I fucking, I mean, it sucks for them, like creatively, because you have to constantly be working towards your next hour, but. I love it because I'm always like wanting to hear the the new shit from. Exactly. Like, I remember thinking when we went to see Stanhope. Uh, when we went to see Stanhope um, at, the, at the comic strip, I was like, as soon as that show was over, I'm like, fuck, I already want to hear the next hour. Yeah. You know, that's why I was so happy when Beer Hall Push came out, but it was a lot of the same material. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, fuck, I already, I'm already like. But I think I liked the live. What we saw a little bit better than Beer Hall Putsch. Yeah, because on Beer Hall Putsch, he didn't do the whole China routine, and that was that shit had me in stitches. <laughs> it was, Welcome to show business. <laughs> that was the perfect fucking tag for that. <laughs> Just him. Yeah. Welcome to show business. <laughs> oh, 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 fuck, bro. That was beautiful. It was. Oh, man. And I can't remember, did he, did he record Beer Hall Putsch before or after coming to El Paso? It might have been after, it just took him a long time to probably put it out. That's what Because the El Paso date was the first, like, one of, either the first or one of the first dates on that tour, on his tour, wasn't it? Yeah, I think... It was the it Shit was Town kind of Tour. The beginning. Did, was it part of the Shit Town Tour? Well, of or course, man. <laughs> Where are we? It's all fucking El Paso. Well, yeah, but still, I mean... No, it's because, like... I can't remember if it was the Shit Town tour or part of the, no Red State tour is Bill Burr. Yeah, yeah. That's the one you saw. Fucker. Wait, I'm not doubting at all that that fucking uh, nice. <laughs> I'm not doubting at all that El Paso is a shit town. I just couldn't remember if it's part of the Shit Town tour. Just can't wait till October. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be happy about that. Cause it's just mirrors. There's like a shitload more shows this year than any other year that I can remember. Yeah, it's definitely been like concerts and it's been quite uh, eventful, which is kind of scary. Why scary? No, because there's, there's so much good shit going on, and then I'm gonna have like a shit year. I'm I know. It's die like, what, tomorrow. <laughs> it's a fucking 2015 is gonna be like just nothing. Yeah, they're gonna bomb LA, and all the famous people that we love are dead. Dude, the fucking Blue Man Group is coming here. Ah, I come like shit about that. I uh, no, I, I mean it's not really something that I'm like jumping out of my seat to go see, but. The fact that, I mean, you know how, you realize how fucking big the Blue Man Group is? They're a fucking Vegas act. Either that, or they're starting to die down, and they need to hit up shit <laughs> places like this. True. Fuck. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, Dude, the economy's all fucked up. So now the people that have made their monies... That sounds so stupid. Their monies? Well, made their money. <laughs> They made their money. They made their monies, all of them. All the monies. All the monies. Because I'm going to go see Manson, so of course. And shit, this last time I went, I bought Alice a ticket. I had those two tickets because I thought I was going with this one bitch, but she was a stupid whore. Uh, so I took Christy instead, and then I got the VIP access. So I probably paid over 200 bucks just to see Manson. Well over 200. But you got to see Manson. And Cooper. Like, you got some meat fucking yeah. dancing. What is this? It's one of the greatest days of my life. What does dick taste like? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost going to go with the obvious odd answer and say chocolate. But it's like berries. Berries. No, that said, was perfect. Dude. I should have said crunch berries. berries. Crunch berries. Captain Crunch. 
<laughs> and it still cut the roof of my mouth. <laughs> Tasting blood for weeks. <laughs> I know. For the rest of the, the entire week, you're just p- trying to pick away the flakes of dead skin that's all torn up on the top of your mouth. You're trying to pull it with your own tongue, and it doesn't work. It just hurts. Get that sweet berry taste back. <laughs> Mixed with blood which was pretty much what it all tasted like in the end. And it's all part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> yeah, if I said Captain Crunch, that would have been better. No, just berries. That was perfect. Just, that was fine. That was perfect the way it was. Berries. <laughs> it was yes, because it was whispering. Berries. <laughs> you should have done it with a gay list at the end. Are you still recording? Yeah. <laughs> Revolution of the Board is brought to you by Morphine and the Dave. Recorded and produced in El Paso, Texas. Edited and engineered by yours truly, the Dave. Theme music, written and recorded by Morphine. Uncle Suchy's Playground, written and recorded by Morphine and the Dave. All other background music provided royalty-free by Incompetech.com. The Dave would like to thank Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor. Morphine would like to thank Red's Wicked Apple Ale, both of which are solely responsible for the second half of this podcast. See you guys next time.